Hi guys, and welcome back to Summer Sunday School at PCMK. How many of you have a toy train at home? Trains were one of the first electric toys, and when they were first released, every little boy wanted one. In a time before battery-operated toys, talking Elmos, and video games, there was nothing cooler than a train that could actually run around the tracks on electric power. Trains are still very popular today, not just with kids, but with adults. Some people really go all out. They build whole towns and villages to go with their trains. They spend hours making buildings, hills, tunnels, trees, roads, just about everything you can imagine to make their miniature train set look as realistic as possible. Toy trains get their power from the tracks they ride on. When you build a train track that runs in a circle, an oval, or whatever shape you might make, you create an electric circuit. The electricity that flows through the rails flows into the wheels of the locomotive, powering the little electric motor that can propel your train forwards or backwards. Some trains even have horns and lights that really work when the power is on. That's the key to playing with electric trains. If there's no power, there's no fun. The train track has to be a complete circle forming the electric circuit. And most important, the power has to be switched on. Unless you turn on the power, the train will not go. Trains remind us that we need power to help us go. We need God to point us in the right direction, to lead us, and to give us the power to do, it, do his will. One man who knew the importance of relying on God for power and leadership was today's Bible hero, Moses. Moses was once an adopted prince of Egypt, but as our story begins today, he is living the slow life in the wilderness, tending sheep. Then God comes along and turns on the power. Today's story is from Exodus chapter 3, where God speaks to Moses at the burning bush. Moses was watching his sheep in the hot, dry desert. Suddenly, he saw a very strange sight. Flames of fire came from a bush, but the bush did not burn up. Moses squinted his eyes. He looked around the bush one way, and he looked around the bush the other way. Moses, Moses, said a loud voice. Moses was scared. Here I am, he said. Take off your shoes, the voice thundered. The place where you are standing is holy ground. Moses kicked off his sandals, keeping his eyes on the flaming bush. I am the God of your fathers, the voice said. Moses hid his face. He was afraid to look at God. I have heard my people crying in Egypt, God said. My people are hurting and I have come to save them. Wow, thought Moses. How will God do this? Go, said God. I am sending you to Pharaoh to ask him to let my people go. Me? said Moses. Who am I to go to Pharaoh? Who am I to lead your people? He threw himself down onto the ground before God, but he kept one eye on the burning bush. I will be with you, God said. Moses trusted God. He was willing to do everything God said. God gave Moses the words and power he needed to talk to Pharaoh and lead the people out of Egypt. Moses had lived a quiet, peaceful life for 40 years, tending sheep. His younger days as the prince of Egypt were long past him, and he was content to live out his days watching his flocks. Then God shows up and tells him to go back to Egypt and save God's people. Moses didn't see himself as a leader or a hero. He made excuses and told God all of the ways he felt weak and inadequate. God answered every objection. He told Moses that he would be with him, giving him the power and direction he needed. Moses became one of the greatest heroes of the Old Testament. He was a leader, a judge, a general, a counselor, and a spokesman. To the people of Israel, he was a great hero. But Moses would be the first to tell you that everything he did was because of God. Moses would tell us that if we rely on God, he will lead the way through any challenge. Moses is only one of the many heroes of the Bible who relied on God for strength to, he did not have. God used many ordinary people to do extraordinary things in the Old Testament. People like Gideon, Elijah, Elisha, David, Joshua, Nehemiah, Esther, and Noah. God put a challenge before each of these men and women that seemed bigger than they could handle. They relied on God and God showed them the way. 
God is still using people to do extraordinary things today. God uses missionaries to make contact with people who have never heard the Bible. He shows them how to meet their most basic needs while teaching them about Jesus. God uses people in our church to teach, to lead, to disciple, and to help others who are in need. God uses men and women to fight for the rights of people who are in need. God can even use kids to do great things. If you rely on God, he will show you how you can share Jesus with your friends. He will use you to help people in need and make a difference in your world. Trains need power to go. We need power to go and do God's work. Ask God to give you power and God will lead the way. All right, let's close with a simple prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for leading the way for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, guys, that's it for today. Come back next week.